Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to continue with information schema. This is part two. We're going to be looking at routines, you know, like store procedures, function, and scalar functions. I'm going to show you what parameters are all about, and then I'm going to show you routine columns. And then you will learn which one of those three cannot get the output from information schema. I'm also going to demonstrate a program that uses information schema, and I'm going to use the output of information schema as the input to this program. Maybe it can give you some ideas. So sit back and enjoy, and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. In this video, we're going to focus on three views of information schema. We're going to look at information schema routines, parameters, and routine columns. And these three views will focus on procedures and functions, where functions are both table valued and scalar. Hope you enjoy this video. In this section, Did You Know, I'd like to introduce two other internal functions, the object definition and the object ID. Notice here that we have information schema.routines. Now you can replace any of the information schema dot whatever tables all the way to routines in here. And it will go out and get you the SQL of that command. It's actually a view. So execute. And notice that it returns us one line. Now the lazy me went out to code beautifiers to go code beautify this view. And it's so complicated. I only tried six of them. I started with the ones that said best code beautifier all the way to ones that said it works. And uh, none of them worked. So I did it by myself. Now I learned a few things and I'm hoping that you will learn a few things. And in the source code below, I have my version of this SQL statement all broken out for you. And I recommend you go look at that and learn about it and understand some of the internals of SQL Server. If indeed you want to be the master, the master must always practice. Let us first begin with information schema dot routines. So what we can say is on line 1415, without using a where in and clause, I can go search all of the functions, store procedures, and scalar functions in one command and get a list of their names, which is pretty cool. But normally, let's keep the scope down and let's first begin with functions. Now, as you know, functions have two flavors. They have table valued functions and scalar functions. And how we can tell the difference inside of information schema routines is we say routine type function and then the data type is table. Let's take a look at this, the function. Notice that when I executed this function and I come over here to the column called data type, we have table. So this is a table valued function. These other ones that have like date time, money in, and var char, these are known as scalar functions. So now we will only execute this statement for the table value functions. And notice that we got one function, contact information. It is a function and is data type is type table. Now that we have the routine name and the data type table, we know that all table functions have, could have, it's not mandatory, but have parameters as input and output as results. Let's see if this function, ufn get contact information, has any input parameters. So we are going to say select star from information schema dot parameters, where specific name equals the name of that table function. 
And notice that it has one parameter, at person ID. And these are all of its attributes of that table. Cool. Now once we get that, then we can go look at the output. And notice we're using the same function name, and this will get us our output. Now we can use both the input, the output, and getting data from information routine to build documents. You know, we don't need to go out there and, you know, like write these by hand, which is a great thing, user documentation. So that's one reason why we use information schema is for documentation. The second reason we use it is to write code generators to produce source code for us that comes directly from the database. And I will show you both of those now. As you see here, we could have some very simple data, a document that explains what a function does and give me my input, my output, and the name of my function we could have some other sections to tell us the business rules as well. Another use of information schema is to write code generators. Here you can see I click functions. Look, I just get the one name. You remember a moment ago, we entered a select statement where I looked for the type table and I just got back one function name. When I clicked on scalar functions, I got 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can also get the SQL of each of these functions. So that is how we use information schema. So now when we look at scalar valued functions to get those out of information schema routines, we say function and data type not equal table. So let's execute that. So notice when we executed that, we got everyone except the one that said table. Sweet. Now remember, everything about a scalar function is about parameters. You got input parameters and output. Remember, one column, one row on the output. So when we go and say select star from schema parameters for some kind of scalar function, notice that we get a parameter mode out and in. The in is optional, the out is required, and that is what makes it a scalar function. Here you can see it has one input parameter called status. Now I use the code generator tool to look at that so you can see that. And notice here I said, here is my scalar function name and open parentheses, here is my one parameter. And notice all scalar functions have returns with some data type. And that's it. And notice the declare at ret and varchar 15, it says return at ret. Notice this variable and this data type are the same data type. Now, if you were wondering if information schema dot routine columns gives me some output on a scalar function, it does not. Remember, all the input and output go through parameters for a scalar function. But, so you know this in your mind and you know it, let's go ahead and execute this. And notice there is no output for a scalar function. Scalar functions are only used input and output in information schema dot parameters. Let us look at the last of this series of procedures that will use these information schema views. Now to get the stuff out of routines, we need to say routine type equals procedure. And notice here, we get a list of store procedures. It's kind of simple. Now the next one is I will cherry pick one of the store procedures and then we will go through information schema dot parameters and this is all of the parameters and here are the most commonly used ones so let's look at the parameters and notice 
This store procedure has two input parameters and they are both in. It is possible for like an insert store procedure, one of the columns could be out or many of the columns could be out. So in or out work for procedures as well. Now, the last question is, does store procedures work with routine columns? And the answer is no. Notice that I'll be using the same store procedure and we get null. So routine columns only work with table valued functions. Let me show you how we get the results from a store procedure that returns rows and data. Before I show you how to actually do it, let's see that this bill of materials actually has a select statement here at the bottom. So this one, after it does whatever it does, it will return data. And that, was, that is what a store procedure can and will do. So many uses, one of them is returning data. But how do we get the columns and data? How do we do that? So the real question is now, how can we get a list of fields and data types from a store procedure and I'm referring to the output. Now if you go on all the boards that help programmers like myself, you'll see a constant question being asked and it's like, I would love to know if there's a way to get return data types and their names from SQL. And I'm sure he's talking about um, store procedures. So. I'm going to show you how I was able to solve it, not with code, that's going to be your job, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. So I've written a program that does it and notice here that I will select my store procedure and I will eyeball it. And I notice that he's executing a CTE and then he says select from CTE. And so this is going to return us a set of columns. And I want to also know these data types of that column. So notice here in the program I wrote, I have an output column. And right away, I already know the input parameters. Now, where do you think those input parameters came from? That's right, information schema dot parameters. I was able to get it from there. But notice the output is missing. I don't have anything yet. We saw that this is a big old select statement, you know, wrapped by a CTE. Okay. But now how do we, how do we move forward? How do we get our output? Well, what we have to do is we have to take that store procedure and we have to execute it. And then what we have to do is we have to capture the results and it will be null, but what we want are just the column names and data types. So let me show you how I did it. So we know these are the inputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative one is the value and the date. Let's put some data in there. One, one, 1970. Okay. Now when I execute that, I'm not executing it to get back data. I don't care about rows and all that kind of stuff. I just want to see the data structures. So let's execute that. Bam. Immediately I get back a list of columns and data types. All I did was execute it with data that I knew would return me null, but I know that in the data structure, the results come back and that's what I cherry picked off. And there you have it team, how to get the output field names and parameters from a store procedure. As you can see here, we have some code that actually does, well, solves this problem. The first thing you needed to do was declare that variable DS as type data set. Now I do a connection and then I have a SQL adapter where I connect. And then here is the command line that you need. SQL adapter dot select command dot execute reader. Notice that I am using command behavior 
schema only or the or statement, you know, a single pipe or key info. Now, once you get that, then on the next SQL adapter fill schema, you'll notice that we will get the schema sort for that data set. Now, once I have that data set, notice I just loop over the tables sub zero dot columns. And that's where I get all the information, the column name, the ordinal position, max length, and most importantly, the data type. And now you know as much as I do about getting result sets from a store procedure. Hey team, thanks for sitting through that long video, right? So information schema, routines, parameters, routine columns. Are they important? Ready? Very important. In fact, I have a previous video where I looked at table, columns, foreign keys, check constraints, and all those others. You need to have those available. So do you watch these videos once and remember it? Um, well, if you're like most people, it takes a couple times to watch it. And then the master constantly practices. So I recommend practice often, as often as you can. Now, in this video, I've also introduced uh, another thing about code generation, writing code generators. Now, using information schema is great input to code generators. So think about that. In the future, I will show you how I write code generators, and maybe that might help you. So once again, thanks for hanging in there. If you could, um, and if you like this video, a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you can. It really does help more than just myself, but other users. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, team, and we'll see you back uh, next week.